Hello, this is Happy MX Guy. Okay, so this is 2021, February 25th. And I'm going to go over my custom frame dilemma. So, I've been using the Speedwagon for since 2013. It was actually a replacement for this TNT Pro XL I was using. I was using it as like a miniature road bike. Okay, so the main reason why I went to the new frame is just to have new technologies, you know, like integrated head tube versus, you know, headset cups. Uh, a larger seat post for the most part. Um, because the best you can do with that frame is 20. 2-2 and they can only be so long before they just start bending right away and then the bottom bracket on that is American which is a bigger shell bottom bracket when this is European <laughs> other than that it's pretty much the only thing that was wrong with the Pro XL that TNT Pro XL was just that like it was fine other ways the back end was nice and long it was light it flexes just right um, it handled good and stuff like that so when I replaced it in 2013 with the speed wagon, the speed wagon had plenty of miles put on it since, but it had the European bottom bracket that gave me some trouble at first, but I found that outboard bearings were a good choice. But the first thing that was really an issue was like the seat clamp is just so close to this freaking weld, it's ridiculous. Like, this is how most of the BMX springs are made. They make it so close that if you do put a high seal in there, you're just putting tons of stress on the weld versus just breaking the keyhole after a while. The keyhole is that back hole. And I'd rather cut the seat two down as the keyhole keeps breaking versus just break the frame immediately. I'd just spend $400 on a frame like this. It might have been 450 Something like that. Because it's chrome. And the chrome held out great. I got more than five years out of that chrome without it starting to peel or this color that much around, you know, this area is usually the most destructive area. There's tight weld spots. But the frame was doing okay. Um, but then in 2018, I decided I'm just going to try to get a custom frame made. And what I did is I went to Pedal Driven Cycles. And ask them for a custom frame. Now this is 2021, February 25th. Okay, so he finally gets to me uh, last Saturday, whatever that was, the 20th or maybe 21st. One of those days. Well, he gets back to me. So. The original frame that was supposed to replace this was a pedal driven cycle frame that's customized. The customizations were basically exactly what you see on my standard 125R customized frames, where the back end's longer. Um, there's sprocket clearance for 48, which standard just did a dimple, but he, he might have actually made it like bend more. Hopefully. I didn't get the frame yet. I just know he got back to me just recently saying he's done. He's going to paint it. I'm going to, I went with black. Hopefully it does black. Hopefully he paints it because he doesn't seem to respond to even like your selections and stuff. But it's going to have like the long, you know, far away from weld keyhole for a long seat post. Because I like to have them, my high seat post. I don't really want to use this frame for touring. Maybe that other frame will be the touring frame instead. Or who knows, I, I didn't get it yet. Um, this is kind of t taken apart because the speed wagon that it's is out here has all the, the parts that were on it kind of and it's set up for riding back and forth for the city at the moment. I was intending to replace even that speed wagon with a frame. So, because this, this replaced this the chrome speed wagon and that replaced the black speed wagon 
with the paddle driven frame. I don't know, maybe that'll just replace my fixed gear frame. I don't, I don't know what to do with it yet. I wasn't really expecting them to even do it at all. So when he does finally ship that frame to me, I'll post a video about what he did to it, what he made different from these, because he went to it, he actually followed, hopefully follows the specs that I told him to do. And the difference really is that okay, this top tube is one and a quarter and this down tube is one and a half. Um, I asked him to do a one and a half top tube, double butted obviously, and a one and a quarter down tube that's double butted. And he uses those taking care of business gussets, T B or T C B. Yeah, T C B. The Elvis thing. So hopefully that's all in there. Hopefully it has a Eurobond bracket. Hopefully this is what I asked for, which is a yeah, it's a longer seat tube like this, but I asked him to do a 31 8 hour diameter. So it's a little thicker and stronger. Because so, I bought a 31 8 C clamp for that frame, but it never came. And whatever things. Also, the back end of the frame is a little longer. Three eighths axle slots. But the main difference is that I asked them to do five eighths seat stays with the three quarters chain stays. Hopefully, they did that. We'll see. But all that skinnier diameter tubes in general should make it even lighter than this 125R. But I'm not really sure what the 125R's tubing specifications are compared to his tubing specifications. Like, these could be like road tubes, for they're really, really light tubes, when his are kind of thicker tubes. I, I don't know what he's using. So hopefully it comes out to be at the right weight and comes out right. Um, like this is far away and I got space here. I heard people are having problems with crank clearance on the frames, so we'll see how that is. And hopefully like the dropouts are 3 eighths, stuff like that. So custom frames are kind of like a hit and miss. I'd like to point out that Standard is one of the few companies that does customizing for BMX frames. Like there's companies that just won't do them. I asked local guys that make titanium frames and they won't make frames for me because they don't make 20 inch frames. They only make their lane mountain bike frames. So I'd rather have a titanium frame made in the USA, but none of those guys want to make them. They're all kind of, I don't know what to say about custom frame builders, but they're kind of um, snobby, is that the word? And when they're mountain bike, road bike guys, they just expect you to be a millionaire to buy their frames too. So let's say if I got a custom titanium frame that kind of is like the 125R and it's made in the USA, it'd be like five or $6,000. Um, assuming they don't even do it in the first place. Because the one guy, he's sort of like, oh, blah, blah, I can do that. And then he just like, doesn't reply to me like, you can do a financing. I'll take like a thousand down or something. No, he, he just like, he wouldn't give me any actual answers to building the frame in the first place. So I just gave up on the guy. It's a guy in Colorado. I don't know his name. I can't think of it at the moment anyway. But a titanium frame would be the only thing really be lighter than steel. My only issue is that titanium would be a problem with titanium other parts. Because titanium, when it's touching other titanium, it kind of wants to join it permanently. And um, I'm not really into that whole seizing pieces part. There are other things that can make lighter that like RNC makes a titanium crank. But do I really trust the titanium crank? Eh, not really, but I don't know. But the pedal driven frame is going to come. So in another video in the future, maybe this week or the next week, I'll show a video of that. But standard, I kind of think everyone's better using standard to get custom frames. They'll do any kind of custom frame. And even if you ask for some goofy custom frame like I do, where Maybe next time I'll have them make a frame with a wider back end, or maybe a frame with 
fender and rack eyelets here and here, like those hourglass pieces that hook to the top of the rack, and just, you know, a rack hole right here that hook to the rack. I don't want to draw a hole in the dropout. Um, and, and if I drill a hole on the other side, it's going to be too much of a clearance issue with sprockets against like the, the nut there. But I guess I could do the drilling, but I don't like drilling on brand new frames I just bought. Just like I don't really want to use this frame and, until the end of the stupid winter. Like I know I, I had it together, but I even got the new seat post and other things, but yeah. But I've been wanting to upgrade the speed wagons for a few years. And I've, I was kind of able to do that with the 125Rs. I do want a new flatland frame that's kind of the same length, too. So there's lots of frames I want to build or have built. Touring frame is the one thing. I want the touring frame to have everything for the rear rack. I can try to get. See, so maybe the pedal driven frame would be good with. This new hub, that's 120, and maybe I'll be able to bend it out easier. Or it might be already 120, because lots of companies make their back ends different. Well, I'm hoping it doesn't have the East Coast head tube angle, where when it's 74 degrees on the Midwest and West Coast, it's 74 degrees. But on the East Coast, 74 is like 78 for the East or the West Coast. You know, if you know what I mean, like, just look at FBM frames, they usually seem too steep. Or kank frames. They said they were 74, but they're really like 78, 79. So hopefully it's the right geometry, similar to the RV and these. So yeah, this is just a B log update from that BMX guy, and thanks for watching.